But I have to erase some of this. I'm going to erase the top part. KC is equal to, uh, I think it was 1,200. Is that right? 1,200. And now I'm going to write the equilibrium expression with K using these values. So it was COCL2 over CO times CL2. There's K. And I actually know all those values. They're right here. I just read them right off the table. So concentration of COCL2 is right here, this value. Uh, it's 0.055. You can do the specific math at home. 3.05. Minus x. That's the products. Divided by the reactants. This value right here. Uh, 0 0.35 divided by 3.05. Plus x times x. There we go. We have one equation, one unknown. Is that okay? Any questions to this point? Everything up to this point is chemistry. Everything after this point is algebra. Okay? This is where most people get crushed in this class. Because of their horrible algebra skills. You basically, there's only one unknown, x. What? If anybody who has foresight mathematically, what will I have to do to solve this equation? Solve for x using what mathematical information? The quadratic formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm assuming you know how to do that in this class. Okay. I'll write it down. If you have a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero, then x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. That means there's potentially two answers. Some, usually chemically, one does not make sense. It'll be like a negative molarity, for example, and that doesn't make chemical sense, even though it makes mathematical sense. So when you solve for x, you will get 4 times 10 to the minus 4. Four. Uh, I'll have to make a slight uh, change on that. This is X that... Uh, This is, you're actually going to get this number. The book solved it a slightly different way. You're going to get that number. You'll have to multiply by the volume, and you'll get this final answer here that's on top. We did it in terms of molarity. The text did it in terms, so if you're looking at the text solution manual, did it in terms of moles. I always change the molarity. You don't have to in this problem. I always do because there's going to be problems later that you have to. So I like to always do it the same way. It does act, add an extra step, but it makes your life easier later. So, yeah, this part was assuming you know how to do the quadratic. There are simplifications I'll give you in class to avoid the quadratic. And there's one here. Uh, Basically, in this question, you can assume that x is, you can try assuming that x is a really tiny number, which it is in this case. If you did that, a normal size number plus a tiny number, you can ignore that x, because this is really tiny compared to this number. And this minus this, you can ignore that number too. So basically, 
you could solve this very easily, say it's this divided by this times x, and just you wouldn't need the quadratic in that way. We're going to do that more in class. So right now, that's why I just wrote up the quadratic. You could solve either way. But sometimes there's sneaky little assumptions you can make to cause the quadratic to disappear, or in this case, these two values to disappear, assuming that x is near 0. Yeah? Wouldn't the problem rise by multiplying by x on the bottom right corner? Because that's a very small number, and it's difficult to determine uh, what the final answer would be if you divide by a very small number, and we don't know that, what that number is. Uh, as far as making that kind of assumption, it, if it's addition or subtraction, that's where the x would drop out, but not multiplication or division. So you'd actually leave that here, and that being a, a small number is going to be irrelevant in the problem. Actually, it should be small to get this huge. So it has to be a tiny number somehow. Uh, so that's what we would expect. But, uh, yeah, so you're going to be okay if it's multiplication or division. You don't need to predict it. So what's going to happen is, uh, once you get your answer, you can plug it back into your equation and see if you get 1,200, right? If you do, your assumption was good, or you did it correctly. If you didn't, something messed up, or you can't make that assumption. So usually, an uh, easy way to do these, make a blind assumption that x is tiny, whatever it is. And if there's addition or subtraction, you drop it out. Disappears here, disappears here. Well, that's multiplication, does not disappear there. Solve, and you'll see in this problem, once you get your answer and you plug it back in, you're going to get, it, it'll work. You do not need to do that little fancy assumption to solve the problem. You just use a quadratic formula. Either way, you got to do one of them. Sometimes the little assumptions won't work. I'll show you more in class as we do more complicated ones where they work. But, uh... Sometimes they don't work and you must use the quadratic formula. So you need to be ready on exam two. It is quite possible you have to use a quadratic formula. Okay?